beautiful case. How to transform a regular violin or fiddle into a Loat Fjord, aka a Swedish traditional fiddle with resonance strings. If you want to know more about the Loat Fjord, the number of resonance strings, how it works, the history, the different designs, check my previous video. This video is going to be about how I modified a regular violin into this. I'm gonna try to go step by step, but it's not really a tutorial either. I'm gonna try to talk a bit about the tools I use and the materials, but it's really much a personal process. And also, as many of you requested already, there will be a sound sample of this instrument, so I'm gonna play a tune on this load fuel towards the end of the video. If you are interested in all modifying, repairing, transforming, nerdy instruments, well, welcome, get on board, we're gonna get into this little adventure. consider before you even think about making a violin into a Lord fuel is the fact that you might ruin said instrument, especially if your skills in woodworking or violin building are not that high. It's not something that you magically can do on every instrument and it's gonna make it better. Actually quite the opposite, you might devaluate an instrument which already has some value and you might even completely ruin the instrument. So don't take a high-end instrument, take a violin that is a little bit crappy or half broken or something, especially if it's your first time dabbing into violin building or modification. I got this violin from a friend of mine, she was not playing on it, it had cracks on the bottom and on the table, it was not playable, it needed some repairs, it probably had a crappy sound from the start, so I thought I could use that instrument for trying to make a load fuel. Also, it's quite important to consider your own skills. It's not really doable to turn a violin into a load fuel if you are not at least a little bit experienced in woodworking, if possible, violin modification, repairs or building. I am by no means a professional myself, but I've been around woodworkers and people who know how to do things with their hands a lot. I have experience in other types of handcrafting, including woodworking, and I already like built or modified a few easier instruments, so I thought I could do that. If the violin you get is almost half broken already, then you don't care, you can try anyways, but a little bit of skills and ideas of materials and tools is good to have from the start, before you modify a violin to a load fuel. Talking about tools! It is quite important that you get some decent woodworking tools. You do not need a lot of specific tools, but it's really good to have good quality material. Because as usual, and I say that all the time, but it's always true, you cannot get a good result with bad material, with bad tools. For making a load fuel specifically, you will need quite some files in different shapes. I highly recommend you to get some uh, key files, little files like this that are very hard and in different shapes. It's good to have a few gouges of different shapes and chisels. It's not really super needed, but it really comes in handy sometimes. You will of course need very, very good uh, drilling stuff uh, for wood and a vertical drill is quite much of a need. <laughs> you are gonna need, of course, saws, fine saw, a bit bigger, sandpaper of different kinds and with pieces of wood that you can use to have it very flat. Very good measuring tools. This is super important, especially um, metallic ruler, so you can actually see what is fully straight or not, if there is a bit of light peeking under in some places. This table is actually pretty straight, pretty flat. Uh, tape is always good, this kind of usual woodworking stuff, a few pliers. The two only very specific tools you need to have, either that you buy, they're not super expensive, or that you borrow from a person who has them, Fallon Builder or someone who dabs into that, are a peg shaver, which 
helps you make the pegs into the right shape and size and a peg hole reamer which helps you make the peg holes also into the good diameter and shape. There are many different variants of these two tools, many different prices, but in general that's what I would advise you to have pretty much. Of course a good working place and a few materials as well. The raw materials you're gonna need for a load fuel is of course some hardwood, back on which type in a minute. Also, if you want some bone inlays, of course some bone, this is a cow. You could also use horn, but bone is harder and also a bit whiter. And you are going to need as well some metallic wire. Stainless steel is a good choice and this one is 0.8 millimeters. Of diameter and I would say this is the absolute minimum so this or more and then you're also gonna need some products first the violin builders friends bone glue and hide glue they are not as technical as their reputation says yes it's a little bit of like boiling them and caring for them while you use them but they're really really good glues because you can you know like heat them and take pieces apart and everything you could also use usual wood glue because we are not working here inside of the body in the instrument so we can use like more regular glue but it's better to have a glue that you can still like heat and open easily like the hide and bone glue this really depends on how comfortable you feel with those old type glues. If it's too complicated, just use wood glue instead. I also use some walnut dye just for coloring the wood. It's by no means necessary, but I like it and I wanted the effect of this color. And last but not least, also linseed oil or some wax for furniture. I used wax, but you could also use linseed oil as finishing touch for the wood. And now let's talk about how I made the load fuel step by step. So first, as I said before, this violin was not playable when I got it, so it needed some reparations. For that and quite a few other things along the modification, I got the help of Pierre Louis, who is a violin builder in La Neuveville in Switzerland. So he repaired the cracks on the violin. He also helped me remove the original fingerboard because you need a fingerboard that is curved so that the resonance strings can pass underneath it. We actually had a bad surprise to discover that the glue used for the original fingerboard was an epoxy glue, like very very strong glue probably. And so it was really hard to remove it. It should have been hide and bone glue, but it wasn't. So that was hard and we almost destroyed the neck of the instrument, but we managed to remove the fingerboard. What we also did at once was to fill in the original peg holes with some boxwood. And while all this was settling at Pierre-Louis' place, in my place I started working on the new pieces. The first thing I did, of course, was the fingerboard. I knew I wanted a fingerboard that was shorter than the original one, because in folk music we very rarely climb, or if we do, it's just only little. And of course, it also had to be curved underneath so that the resonance strings can pass. So I based myself on the original existing fingerboard, and I made a new one out of wild service tree, also called checker tree, or in Latin, sorbus terminalis. It's a wood I have already used for a few instrument building projects because it's very hard but very easy to work with as it has pretty much no fibers. It has a natural kind of pinkish color but I knew I wanted to have something dark brown so I colored it using walnut dye. I also decided I wanted some bone inlays as it's quite traditional on Loat Fueler in general and I inspired myself of different pictures I could find of old Loat Fueler and of the one I have seen in person, the one played by Magnus Gustafsson, which is also depicted on the cover of this book, Smolensk Musik Tradition. 
So I made these little bone inlays. It looks very tiny, but it takes a lot of time to make, to really adjust them and make the holes that will hold them into place. Then I sanded everything and waxed everything. And then I was on to making a tailpiece in the similar style. So same thing, plus I had to make the holes for the strings and also the resonance strings, which are gonna be attached on two metallic hooks. I also made two nuts or upper saddles, I think they can also be called. At least I've been calling them that for a while, so maybe I just called them wrong for years. <laughs> so one for the melody strings, for which I chose boxwood, which is hard and quite nice to work with. And one tiny one in bone for the resonance strings, so that they would not cut through something that would be too soft. Last but not least, I also had the pleasure of making the new tuning pegs. I wanted boxwood because it's just my favorite wood in terms of appearance and also it's very hard and resistant. So I needed six of them and for these I also got inspired by old Lord Fuller but maybe even more by old Harding Feller. When all this was ready it was time to get the fiddle itself again. I first digged into the cavity of the head as much as I could to make as much space as possible for the new extra tuning pegs, because from four you're gonna have six now. And then we went to drill the holes in the head. And for that it's quite important to have something very stable and a vertical drill is quite important. And you have to be very stable and pierce really good with very good materials. If you are not careful here, the wood can very, very easily crack and break, and then the head is ruined. Then we glued the new fingerboard onto the body of the instrument, and I was really pleased to see that it fitted quite well, I have to say. And I got a Kevlar link to put on the tailpiece to attach it to the button. More on that later, because Kevlar is not as perfect a solution as we might think sometimes. But then tuning pegs again, it was a lot about basically making your tuning pegs into the right size and shape, and same thing for the tuning peg holes. So that's where you use these two specific tools I showed you before, to make sure that everything fits very well. That was quite a bit of a hassle and I had to redo it several times until it actually worked. Oh yeah, before I forget, uh, I also modified the F-holes to match some old designs of photographs I had seen and um, sculptures of old instruments in general, not specifically Lord Fueled. I also made the hook in metal that you have to have underneath. At first it was too long so I had to shorten it a few times. Many of these steps basically had to be done several times and I wasted some material and quite some time to adjust everything. But in the end the instrument was almost ready. And then came the final big important thing, which is to adjust a bridge. Before I put any tension on the instrument, I got the help of Mikael Valmo in Jävle, in Sweden. He is the violin builder behind the Bow Studio. Stroak Studion in Jävle, which I very warmly recommend. Very good bows, by the way. No, I'm not sponsored. I really just like his work. And he adjusted the sound post so the violin could handle the pressure. And he helped me choose a bridge for this instrument. I also got a few crappy bridges from him just to find the right angle, because I had not measured yet where the holes should be. The extra holes in the bridge also for the resonance strings. So I could try with some crappy bridges to find the right angle so that the resonance strings can go freely under the fingerboard and do not start doing like because they touch the wood somewhere. This was quite a bit of a hassle to find the right place to drill them. In the end I found it and I used the definitive bridge and put it into place. And then it was about tensing everything, putting tension into the violin. And here I had quite a few problems. The tuning pegs were still not fully adjusted, I had to adjust them again. It was really hard to just simply put the resonance strings through all that. I had to use like needles and weird stuff and weights to manage to get them through. And 
Kevlar that was supposed to be so strong mm, and hold tension of the tailpiece to the button broke. So in the end I decided to use some metallic thread as I had already seen on some old examples of instruments and it seems to work fine so I just did that and it seems to actually work fine. So when I present the process like this, it sounds like I did that and then I did that and then I did that and it went fine, but it took actually a long time. I had many times when I just did not work on this, I didn't have the energy or didn't have the motivation for doing specific annoying things that didn't want to work. And as I said, some parts had to be done many times until they worked. But in the end, I was able to put some tension into the instrument and I was very careful. I used several days to put some tension there and I turned very carefully the pegs. And in the end, I settled into a tuning that is lower than 440 for an A. It's pretty much two tones lower and also it is not in G, D, A, E, but it is in the equivalent of troll tuning, A, E, A, C. C sharp but two tones lower. Why lower? Because I don't dare to put all the tension, full tension of this instrument, because it has more strings, because I'm not sure of my tailpiece. I decided to go as high as I could feeling that the instrument would respond well and that the tension was not too hard. I could feel it in strings and this feels good enough. I might tune it a bit higher in the future, maybe not. For now I like its sound. It's kind of dark and it's soft but round and of course very resonating. It is a mess to tune, really a mess to tune, so now it's already out of tune since I recorded uh, the playing. It's a low of tune, it's gonna be out of tune most of its life, I guess. But now it's time for what you have been requesting quite a bit already since I talked about Lord Fjoller, some demonstration of its sound with actually good microphones and not the camera microphone. <laughs> so this was the process of transforming a regular violin or fiddle into a Lord Fjoll. If you liked this, please consider supporting me on Patreon and at least like this video and subscribe to the channel. And now on to some music. Thank you.